Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And we will be continuing with the conversation of the NSAS movement, hashtag 505, and a whole lot more that the youth are asking for. And with us on um, having this conversation with us is um, Ona Ehomo and Sega Link. How are you doing, sirs? Doing very well, thank you. All right, thank you. So, welcome back to the show. So, let's proceed with this conversation. Yeah. So, Segalink, that you 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 are supposed to answer a question which I will see asked. Yeah, maybe so. I should retrace yeah. the question again, which is basically um, bringing to the fore the call for the resignation of the IG IGP. So, um, Segalink, do you think that is a fair call at this moment? No, I don't think it is a fair call because what is what the police are going through now, if you fire everybody in the police and bring in new people without fixing the actual problem, you are still going to get the same thing. So there's no point punishing ourselves. It's not about persons. It's about a structure and system. Um, many of, you, of us have not walked in the shoes of these people. You have not walked. You don't know what goes on in the um, federal, uh, the uh, force headquarters. You don't know what is going on there. You don't know what they go through. I have been walking through that system for years, and I know what they go through. And I still hold them to account. And also, I must, in fairness, let people see what is going on there. Before now, it's always very difficult for them to engage the authorities and negate anything. Remember, the Constitution makes sure that they take orders from the presidency. They mm -hmm. can't complain. They can't counter. They just have to make do with what they have. Like I told you, 30% of their budget it doesn't get passed. Mm. So how do you expect them to function? But when something happens, we want to hold them to account. And also, there's a political force also in there that prevents them to, from punishing people as they deem. Yeah. We've been there. We've been having these issues, these conversations. We've been uh, holding police to account, arresting officers, re 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 uh, uh, retrieving money across Nigeria. And we know what problems we go through to get this done. But let me go back to what uh, Dr. Enna said earlier on about the reforms before. We have never had a reform with the police. Hmm. Because if you are going to direct a reform, you don't tell police to reform themselves. They can't be a judge in their own case. Hmm. So what we have with the FSAS is not a reform at all. Hmm. It was just a stop gap that the IG of those days had to put in after meeting with the stakeholders. We were there at that meeting. We started NSAS. We, 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 we got the police to admit their errors and crimes. And also we started investigations. We did um, uh, uh, judicial hearings across Nigeria. Hmm. And we had a submission to that which is one of the things that is in the white paper. So based on that, we had a protocol in place that actually gave us peace around that 2018. All but right. when there was a change of guard, a change of IG, the IG felt he needed to start over. So he repealed that uh, stopgap, and then killings continued. So All that right. was what happened. And that was what made people feel that the reform or the stopgap that was put in place was just nonsense because... They don't see any reason why the same size that have been taken okay. off the street before right, and been compared to wear uniform have been compared to not to roam about the street are now back on the street with the CPs. Thank you, you Sega Link. So that was um, what happened then. I want so to what address... What uh, CP did, uh, what this, uh, the IG did, what the IGP did now was to return that same protocol into place after two years. And those right. two years has cost a lot of Nigerians' lives. It has cost a lot of Nigerians a lot of stress. So with that, people can't be... They are not forgiving. They are like, why should we believe you this time? Why All should right. we trust you? And that's why they're still there. But again, I would not want to put this on persons. I would expect that we we'll continue to hold them to account. And now that the, government, the federal government have seen the implication of their actions, the police have seen the implication of their negligence, mm. and we have already given terms, and the terms of and this thing is more than five. Mm. There were nine True. conditions given to them, and True. they are very stringent. Right. You understand? And it has been published, which right. also which includes the fact that cyber, crime, cyber crimes investigation and enforcement are intelligence-based uh, operations involving the amalgamation of technology, rule-based collaborations, and handshake with the legal arm of the justice system. So it is not a roadside phone searches, you know, thing. So all, all these right. things they know. And we have, we have also said that the punitive action must be very steep so that any officer who commits an offense or who breaches the, the right. provisions of the police act must face serious, right. serious uh, 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 charges. So Thank you, Sega. We know you no are really. We know you are so really, this is exactly really. exactly what we're saying. Sega, we know you are really, really passionate about this, but I want to focus on um, um, Ona Ehomo right now because um, a lot of people have considered you pro SARS 
or pro swats or whatever we wish to call it based on the um, post which was released recently that you said nigerians should expect an upsurge in armed robbery kidnapping and a whole lot of other vices um because of the sas which is saying which we are clamoring should be ended now why did you feel the need to say that or why did you even say that in the first place that we should expect an upsurge in kidnapping armed robbery and a whole lot of other vices Well, in my business, which is called security business or intelligence business, we call it um, warnings. We call it warnings. We give warnings. You, you give uh, indications uh, to people. Uh, you give them advance warning such that there is no surprise. Mm. Now, um, and that's what I was doing. It's a service to Nigerians that if we withdraw, we, we have shut down, the federal government has shut down SARS right now, uh, effectively. Now, when you shut down SARS, there's a lacuna. There is, there is nothing in between. It's just the regular policing that we have right now. So what do you think happens to the bad guys? You think they go on break too? They don't go on break. They, they go to work. In fact, this is their... This is their time. This is their harvest time. Uh, uh, coincidentally, we are in the fall now. This is October, November. This is harvest season. We're in harvest <laughs> time for them. So they're going to harvest people. And who are they going to harvest? Us. They're mm. going to attack us more. So what I was saying was that, in fact, it was a comment directed at the um, Nigerian government, which was saying that, look, uh, you had to respond to the protesters by taking urgent action in shutting down SARS. But what are you doing about um, uh, protecting society in the interim before you bring back a new um, uh, street crime combating right. unit? That is a violent, um, uh, violent crimes and kidnapping combating uh, unit. Uh, in this case, uh, the government has uh, nicknamed this SWAT. So I think... Um, uh, I, I, let's put it this way. I'm pro-Nigeria. I'm a security expert. My job is to prevent all losses, all mm. losses, whether loss of lives or loss of property, loss of mission, uh, loss of the environment, even then we protect the environment. My job is to safeguard people, safeguard missions, safeguard uh, uh, property. Now, mm. having uh, safeguard information. Now, having said that, um, how do you go about it? If, if the police shuts down SARS, well, that means that um, there's going to be a, a loophole. We call it a vulnerability mm. uh, that will be exploited by the bad guys. Right. Uh, and guess who they are going to exploit it on? You and I. Right. Uh, because yeah. when they go to town, then we become the object of their... Okay, um, I'm attacks. getting some reactions from Sega Link in the background. So I'd just like Sega Link to come in quickly on this because I don't think you totally agree with everything um, Onai Homo is saying right now. Um, I have always been an advocate for the criminal justice system. I've been in the system for quite a long, a long time. I'm right. not as young as I look. Um, I must also say that to denigrate the entire almost 300 and something thousand police units as sissies and uh, nurses, you know, within the system is not unfair. Mm. And because of this relegation and this segregation between the strike force and the police mm, entirety, you have actually allowed them to take a back seat. Mm. When you call them for anything, they just sit down and say, she be that star, stars are there. Mm. And that's why impunity was actually growing. And that's one of the reasons why we have a lot of silos within the system, whereby you have police divisions, you know, having their own SARS, so to say, just people throw away their uniform, wear some muftis, and go and arrest people to take money because SARS is doing it. Which is one of the reasons why what we informed the decision to shut down SARS so that there won't be any other excuse for people to commit impunity and reform the entire police right. entity. But meanwhile, I will not, of course, it's a security matter, but I must tell you that it's not an open door to uh, uh, open guys. season on the season, mm. on, the, on the citizen, that mm. they can be attacked by, uh, by, by rogues and everything. There are still intervention squad that can swing into action for all these purposes. We have in case people don't know, what are some of these interventions you, know you would police name? Police is the only entity in the world that ha our police is the only entity in the world that has hundreds, uh, uh, um, tens of uh, of silos, you know, tens of silos, which is unnecessary. So we need to collapse a lot of things. Tactical units must be just one. They must mm. not be ubiquitous. They must not be all over the place. Mm. They must only come to address what they have, that which they have been created for, and go back to wherever they are coming from. That way, we appreciate them as superheroes. 
Not see right. them as special and then see them, you know, all mm. over the place committing crimes. Right. You understand? So so that's that's why we are the worst police in the world for second year running. And I hope we're not going to take another trophy next time. That, that so has, the sentiment about I have be... a lot of wonderful people who are commanders across I, Nigeria. We I work mean, with these people once that, in a while. Really I'm not saying they're all bad, but I'm saying the 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 impunity of SARS and the historical murders that have still been unsolved with a lot of parents crying and asking for the whereabouts of their words, you know, is something we need to look into. Which is How my, can which we is win trust my next when there are unsolved issues? Where uh, rogues are still on the road, are still walking free. Where murderers are still walking free. Right. That is the question. So that's that, why we that have to take my, my my next, these people my out, next question, the Sega. And then begin to reposition the tactical score. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Shago. Because oh, I, I like that you made a clear distinction between all of them. I've said on this table many times when we usually argue between enters or reform stars is that what happens to the police force in general? Why is there some type of special treatment to one of them? The same people that are going to be training them, you know. So I really like that you brought out, brought out that um, um, distinction between both of them. I also like that you mentioned accountability because another thing I don't really see, there's videos all over the, all over the internet about people clearly, clearly um, abusing human rights, torturing us, the citizens, torturing peaceful people, hurting and killing them, raping. We've seen the list of all those things. But what I don't see is what happens to these men. Um, I, and I know that the whole, there's not, it's not everyone who's in the force that's, that's committed that crime, and a lot of people are protecting us and all that, but how, why isn't there a, a system in place to show the real, the, real, um, the real justice that has been served, if that makes sense? Because you mentioned when you were answering Elsie's question that you know, there, there's accountability and there's reformation and all that, but I haven't seen how, like what happened to the person that, that arrested Ojabi and beat him and called him a criminal wow. when he was actually a manager for an, a, a music artist called Oxlade. What happened to the person that hurt Tina? Like, where are the names of all these people? Are, are they actually being reformed? Because I don't think we're asking for reformation for those people. Oh, we want them to be fired accountable and accountable. And because they've committed a crime, right? We still have people that have a record uh, that have a criminal record because they protested. So you cannot say that that same energy wouldn't be given to the people who are actually hurting the protesters. So what's happening to them? We are not just looking for reformation. We want them to have, um, you know, be taken want to justice. court and be served, uh, you know, paid, paid the, um, the time for the crime that they've committed. Is that happening? Or maybe it's not coming to social media. So please shed more light on that. Of, of course, it is happening. You, it is part of the demands that was sent to the president that every single person that has committed a crime within this period and even before now must be brought to book. We've been doing this it's because we're not selling. That's the reason why it mm. looks as if, you know, these things are not done. But mm. people who have experienced these services, who that is rendered for free can attest to it to the fact that they get justice and it's not depends on them when they, if they want to press charges or not mm. but like i said every single officer who have committed an offense in this regard or violated human rights or mm. violated the police act mm. you're talking about surely yesterday we were in yes. the meeting when these things were happening we were mm. watching it live on video and when we saw these things we we broke the meeting down we shut down the meeting and said i give call your men to order mm. tell mm. your men to stop doing this to our youth and then it's immediately they, they, they went into the whole thing. And, and, and of course, the president did not remove, the presidency or the panel did not cherry pick what they are going to accept. They accepted everything. And there are people who go, that's going to be in charge of this accountability thing, bringing these people to book. Yeah. It happened yesterday. You won't see it automatically today because, again, there is a structure. You right. see, we live in the internet age. The police is just recovering from 1943. <laughs> Understand this. There are systems in place. It is not something that you complain on social media and it happens quickly. We are making that happen because we are the, a bridge mm. in between mm. the two, uh, uh, the people and the public. But the right. police in its entirety, the punishment and all, resides in the police service commission. Mm. And right now, the police service commission, they have their own processes. If they want to punish two or three people, for example, it takes months, if not years, mm. to get those things done. And we're trying to stop that. That's why we have the police uh, uh, act of 2020. To fix all this problem, all right. to remove I, I this, think uh, Elsie uh, has a question for you, Segalin, from or... uh, uh, under the IG, so that it can be independent. Okay. So right. we're um, saying Sega... the same thing. I'm just trying to say, mm. let us temper the emotions, be a little bit objective, mm. see from both perspectives, mm. and continue to hold them to account while we monitor what they are doing to ensure that we get the justice that right. we seek. Okay, right. um, um, thank you for being this link. I mean, you're doing an amazing job. However, the fact that um, we have policemen or regular policemen that see themselves as gods. We have policemen that see um, the 
they need to go to a protest ground with live ammunition. We have people mm. that do not understand basic communication. We have policemen that get triggered when they realize you know your rights. I mean, it just tells me that the psychological evaluation that we're asking for is one of the biggest thing that needs to get done. And I don't see that as the smallest job in this whole um, nine for nine or five for five, however, I don't know how many you they are right now, it? you know. <laughs> right. um, I, I, I feel like that's one of our biggest problem and challenge. Now, I also saw in the news that they are saying, oh, the uh, members of the dissolve SARS to come to Abuja mm, to be psychologically evaluated. Psychological now, evaluation. what is the system put in place to ensure that this evaluation is really an evaluation and they are really getting trained? Who are these psychologists and how is it getting done? Because as far as I'm concerned, a lot of things that is going on, forget about the fact that they are not being paid well. How much is even the, the minimum wage of a regular Nigerian that is being killed mm. at the end of the day? We've right. seen the list. We know how much they are being paid. We know they want more and we know they should get more. But however, there are thousands of youth that are unemployed, millions even mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And it doesn't mean that they carry guns to the street to go and kill anyone. So how are we really evaluating their mindset to let them understand that they're there to protect and they're there to do their job and not to become our enemies? And I think this question should go to Honor Ehomo too as a security expert, yeah. so coming from that angle. So um, let's start with you, Sega, though. Yeah, um, you're saying how this has been done. You know you're preaching to the choir. I am actually on your side too here. Mm -hmm. And also you know that police are citizens too. To be a bridge in between two organizations that have been warring for 90 years before we were born, mm. because our parents didn't do anything about it. You know, it's a very difficult task. You'll be accused of a lot of things. You know, for the past 48 hours, a lot of people have been attacking my handles, but I understand the pains of everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, what you're asking, why do, how did we get here? The police reflect our society. It is your imams. It is your pastors. It is your leaders that have slots, your politicians that have slots and put their thugs into the system. They are the ones that bring their boys, their political boys, into the system and make sure that they get into SARS. They are the ones that make this thing happen. Mm. The police have been shackled by politicians for so long. Mm. If a police ID, for example, want to punish a certain officer for one thing or the other, there will be political elements that will tell you he's the only person representing our region. Wow. If you do this to us, we will not take it lightly. They will walk to the president and say, this your ID doesn't understand what happened. We voted you a mask. If they remove that boy, there will be hell. We'll vote for somebody else. The president doesn't want Wala. Fires the ID. Brings you a new person who will be diplomatic and then we continue to die on the streets so these are issues that are there that police cannot complain about if we don't see it we can't get the change if you want anybody to understand you see from their perspective first that's the only way they can listen to you and see from your perspective and this is what we're doing we're not saying we're throwing our people under the bus i have i don't sleep you know this already mm -hmm. and it's not just i our organization as a whole and those we collaborate with we have a lot of lawyers in nigeria today and law firms who who, who volunteer their services to us for this so this change we are looking for, it is not a switch. We are dealing with a culture of 90 years old, and we have to continue to you know, engage it until the new culture kicks in, and it does not happen without legislation. We have legislation now. We are looking at implementation. You understand? So that it will be impossible for an illiterate, it will be impossible for somebody who doesn't understand, who doesn't have the right man mindset, who has not been trained without the right equipment you know, to, be a, to wear the uniform of Nigerian police. We want a case where any policeman who is picked randomly from anywhere in Nigeria can represent Nigeria anywhere in the world. Mm. This is what we're working towards. And it, is, it favors the police itself, which is why we're saying the end SAS as an objective is one thing. We have ended SAS. But the other thing is, which is critical is the holistic reformation of the Nigerian police, which involves the recruitment, which re uh, involves the promotion, which also involves the discipline and the punishment. And that resides in the hands of the Police Service Commission. That All must right. be strengthened to ensure that what you are praying for happens on ground. All right. So, um, uh, Onai Homo, we would like you, as a security expert, what is your take on these people that are supposed to be protecting us and making sure that we have a peaceful protest are actually there with armed guns and they're shooting at protesters and people are dying? As a security expert, should this even be happening in the first place? Yeah, thank you very much, sir, for uh, Mr. Ife, for um, having me in this program. Well, I think um, the yes, they are not supposed to come to a protest armed. However, there are rules of engagement. You know, the police is a it's a disciplined organization. It's an organization that uh, runs by uh, policies and procedures. So, um, if the rule of engagement in 
um, confronting or in uh, doing crowd control demands taking live firearms. It depends on what the rule is. That rule is usually made in the office somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps um, part of a force order uh, or perhaps a part of a departmental policy uh, or even command policy. Uh, it depends on um, you know what the particular engagement is. But there is specifically a rule of engagement. It's called ROE, mm. which um, uh, defines what an officer is supposed, what equipment is supposed to take, whether it's supposed to take a shield, a baton, supposed to take uh, firearms, supposed to take uh, even photographic equipment mm. to record uh, the images of those who are protesting. Right. Because you really never know, you know, with um, with a crowd, anything can go wrong. Um, I, I have in this your program praised the young people for carrying on peaceful protests. Mm. Uh, right. Yet we've seen in some places where uh, police personnel have been attacked. Now we've seen police personnel also attacking uh, unarmed uh, protesters. So it's not good for um, any side. Um, now, Anna. however, what, what I'm trying to emphasize here, sir, in answer, direct answer to your question okay. is that there are rules of engagement that police officers or police personnel uh, go with or go by when they confront a crowd. Right. Uh, it's called so crowd as a, as control. A, as a, as and we have various expert. strategies. I mean, uh, Nigerians are watching controlling that crime, including the equipment uh, that you bring to the crowd, uh, crowd, and then the formation, the kind of formation you maintain, the flanking, uh, and how you um, kind of contain the crowd. Because what you're trying to do, you're trying to save lives save the lives of the protesters themselves, save police lives, save the lives of uh, other citizens, and you're trying to protect property. You're trying to ensure that nothing gets burned down. I'm sure you've seen images of uh, me, the Black Lives protests in uh, America, how they have been touching buildings and all. Now, that is, that's not a peaceful protest. That is a violent protest. Right. But the one that I've seen here in Nigeria, what I saw at Lekki yesterday and all that, those have all been very peaceful protests. And the police personnel I've seen have also behaved uh, you know, in a very decent manner. And when, the, for example, there was a situation in um, Abuja yesterday where a press uh, crew was attacked. Hi, Mr. Ona. Hello. Can you hear me? Now, my question really, I mean, I need, we don't want to really cover the, the core of this conversation in a lot of um, technicalities and grammars. You've talked about ROE, that's rule of engagement, engagement. and all, and um, how they can have their shield or whatever they decide in their office. Now, we're saying, looking at the human rights and constitutionally, as a security expert that you are, should there be life ammunition? In a peaceful protest that you have yourself acknowledged that this protest um, has been very peaceful, should there be guns going out, stray bullets, killing people at the protest ground? That is the question. Can I, can I, can I please help? Oh, yes. Please, uh, go ahead. Um, like I told you, there is something called standard operating procedure for every security organization. And it's not something you can emotionally navigate. There's something called the First Order 237, which begins to dictate what a police officer should do when they are well, well armed, when they are confronted with a threat. Mm. Nobody is justifying criminality. Nobody is incentivizing crime by saying police have the right to shoot at people. But mm. exact, uh, the question we need to ask is, what equipment do you provide for these people? What equipment do they have to cope this? How are they? Do, they, do, do we care about their mindset? Do we care about their, their training? Do we care about the equipment? How much exactly has been prioritized for their training? When a police officer tells you he's going on training, especially if there are other ranks, they are going to hell. That's what it right. means. Right. They will pack their bed sheets, they will pack their foam, they will carry buckets, even water, to the place where they are going to go and have training, in some forest somewhere that have been allocated due to some corruptions within the system. But All does right. this justify what they're doing? It doesn't. But who gives this order? Which, who gives this order for them to shoot at on, on, on armed protesters? We challenge this. Nobody has uh, clapped for this. It was condemned globally. It was condemned by everybody who has a heart, who has a soul. And the people who did this are not going to go scot free. Okay. All right. But at the same time, police officers who have been killed. Segaling. We've seen, uh, as of yesterday, police officers were still attacked. 
There are pictures everywhere. We don't want this. Second we don't leg, want we're running an enmity between the people. We're and running the out of time. You know how it is when we're having a very important you might conversation. Need to expand the time. You might need to expand the <laughs> I know. All right. So finally, there has been an issue of a deleted tweet from you, and this has caused a lot of pandemonium on um, Twitter. So we'd just like you to share real quick in. 60 seconds just shed light on that switch which you deleted and everything that is going on on twitter right now in 60 seconds please yeah i yes i was able to triangulate where the attacks were coming from certain individuals who were responsible for the commercial protests we have in nigeria are trying as much as possible to hijack this protest and weaponize it against uh, the government mm -hmm. and i said i'm not going to have that because you cannot i don't see any reason why we have been around here serving Nigerian people in our private capacity without seeking funds, without uh, looking for grants from any foreign nation. We are, we are responsible enough, you know, to be accountable for ourselves and to, be, to show responsibility. We are, be, we, are, we are teaching and leading and raising leaders who are easy to govern, difficult to and impossible to, to enslave in our society, to take charge of the narrative of governance. You, it's, you can't wait for government to do everything for you. You have to take account. So when these people went behind to be meeting billionaires and whatever, whatever, why you are using the campaign hashtag as though they are representative of the organization? We know what, where they have brought us through. We know what they have done before. We know the antecedent. We're not going to allow that to happen. And they're trying to blackmail. They're trying to uh, stage a coordinated attack on my hand to distract me. Mm. And I felt, no, something must be done. And of course, I can't be working in securities and I don't know all these things. I know what mm. is happening. I'm just, I just decided to, you know, to close my eyes. Then I decided to show the world, this is who they are. This is what they're saying. This is what they're saying. And this is why they are doing what they are doing. All right. Thank you so much, Segaling, for shedding light on that. But like I said, we're running out of time. And um, thank you, uh, Ona Ehomu, for joining us. And thank you, Shegwan Wusoya, popularly called Segaling, for being on the show with us. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Applause TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, will go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Elsie Godwin, and the entire production team and of course my studio guest dr ona ehomu and shega sega link um this is plus tv africa's tea time my name is ifel luau stay safe out there <laughs>